Hello and welcome to your lesson for Tuesday, May 26th. Congratulations, you are almost there. The school year is almost over. So I hope you're staying strong and pushing towards the finish line, not just slowing down as the race ends. Okay, stay strong, keep doing what you're doing. Stay with me. Let's get to some history for today. Last week, we went over the Protestant Reformation and the huge change that that created in Europe, how the Catholic Church lost power as a result of this movement. Today, we are talking about the scientific revolution. If we're looking at our timeline down here, we're talking about a period of advances in sciences and maths that basically changed the course of European history and the history of the world. A lot of what you're going to learn today might actually sound familiar from your science classes. We're going to learn a little bit about the history of science and how it became what it is today. Today's class is going to be different because instead of taking you through every slide, I'm actually just going to be giving you a big picture of what the scientific revolution is and why it matters. After this video, you're going to open these slides, which can be found in the week 10 folder. You're going to have the slides in front of you and you're going to complete some closed notes on your own. So I'm going to help you with the big picture. You're going to fill in the details on your own. The scientific revolution was mentioned in last week's vocabulary video. I'm not going to play the whole thing, but I do want you to be reminded of some of those key points. Listen to this clip and see if you can get an idea of the big changes that took place during the scientific revolution. There's no art, just guns and greed. You need a renaissance. Do you believe in magic like people used to? You get sick and you think God hates you? They didn't question what the priest told them until a couple of scientists got emboldened. They said, I won't take your word as the truth. If you want me to believe, you better show me some proof. This was the scientific revolution. How you like them apples like Isaac Newton. Now everybody thought God made the earth and put it in the center of the universe. Copernicus thought it was the sun at the center like the gums at the center of a, a blow pop. Galileo's telescope proved the earth move. The Pope said Galileo was a fool. Actually, the Pope couldn't handle the facts because science kind of gave him like a panic attack. If you're sick of eating the same thing, So similar to the Protestant Reformation, you're going to see some tension between the Catholic Church and what the Catholic Church teaches and science itself, or what we now know to be science. Coming out of the Middle Ages, people were very superstitious. If people got sick, say with the Black Death, you thought, oh my gosh, this is a punishment from God. They didn't rely on facts. They didn't rely on science and logic like we do now. The scientific revolution is a shift away from superstition and towards fact-based logic and towards the scientific method. Let's see how all of this unfolded. Our essential question for today is the same as it was last week. We're still exploring how can new ideas change the way we live. And in this case, we're figuring out how did new ideas change the people's lives of Europe during this time. You will have a class discussion this week and it will be based on this question. So please make sure you do your class discussion after this lesson. You will be able to identify the causes and effects of the scientific revolution. We will have our Zoom class this Thursday as usual and I will still be awarding extra credit for those that come prepared and ready to participate. Your week will go like this. Today we're watching and listening to the video. While you do that, you will be doing closed notes once again. I'll explain more on that later. And then the last thing you'll do this week is our Zoom class for Thursday, May 28th. About our Zoom class. I've noticed that some people are coming to class, but when I call on them, they're not really participating, right? So extra credit is only gonna be for those people that I know are there, I know are paying attention. Even if you're not showing me your face, but you're responding in the chat box, I know you're paying attention. So if you want that extra credit, please make sure you are fully participating in our class on Zoom. Let's get into the causes of the scientific revolution. 
You guys know by now that history is just not that simple. There's never just one cause to a major event. Today, we're only talking about two causes that led toward the scientific revolution, things that really changed the way that people think. Let's take a look at this clip. The beginning of the age of discovery dates back to the 15th century. Its center was Europe. In those days, Commerce in the Mediterranean world continued to thrive by means of the trading activities of Italian and Muslim merchants. However, when the Islamic nations of the Ottoman Empire began to expand, the free trade that had been possible up to that time became difficult. Since it was believed that spices and immense quantities of gold lay waiting in the expanses of Asia, European merchants considered a direct route to Asia to be essential. Zeal for the propagation of Christianity was also on the rise, and missions were encouraged. Enthusiasm to proselytize the Christian faith continued to spread outward. The first trailblazer was Portugal. Portugal's Prince Henry the Navigator advanced to the western coast of Africa in the latter half of the 15th century. With the later voyages of Bartolomeu Diaz and Vasco da Gama that followed, a route to India was discovered through exploration eastward. Not wanting to fall behind was Portugal's rival, Spain. Spain did the opposite of Portugal and headed for Asia by exploring to the west. In the process of aiming towards this goal, the new world was discovered by Columbus. The art of sea navigation was developed on voyages like these, which utilized compasses, nautical charts, and other tools, and the progress of the Age of Discovery picked up even more speed. Many countries in Europe set out for Asia or the New World. At the dawn of the 16th century, a fleet led by Magellan succeeded in humankind's first circumnavigation of the globe. So what kind of effect did these activities have on the world? So how does this period of exploration lead to the scientific revolution? If you're going to travel the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, without any GPS, you might need a more accurate map. You might want to rely on more than just the stars to guide where you're going. Explorers needed maps that were correct, faster ships things that they could rely on to get to where they needed to go. Not to mention there was so much opportunity in this new world that the Europeans had not yet discovered and new ideas that came with this new world. There seemed to be a lot more possibility than there once was. It led people to ask questions and seek answers. Let's check out our second clip. What makes a book a book? Is this a book? Probably not. But is this? To answer these questions, we need to go back to the start of the book as we know it and understand how these elements came together to make something more than the sum of their parts. The earliest object that we think of as a book is the codex, a stack of pages bound along one edge. But the real turning point in book history was Johannes Gutenberg's printing press in the mid-15th century. The concept of movable type had been invented much earlier in Eastern culture. But the introduction of Gutenberg's press had a profound effect. Suddenly, an elite class of monks and the ruling class no longer controlled the production of texts. Messages could spread more easily, and copies could constantly be produced, so printing houses popped up all over Europe. The product of this bibliographic boom is familiar to us in some respects, but markedly different in others. Okay, here we see an invention, the printing press. This allows ideas to be spread quickly. This is also something that impacted the Protestant Reformation. When Martin Luther copied the Bible into German, a language people could understand, instead of Latin, a language only the priests could understand, he was able to use things like the printing press to get his copies of the Bible out quickly and change the minds of the people that were following the Catholic Church. 
Similarly, scientists during this time were able to use things like the printing press to spread their ideas, and their ideas sometimes conflicted with what the Catholic Church was teaching. Anything that went against the church's teachings was called heresy. These are any beliefs or opinions that go against what the church has established as true. If you were spreading these ideas, you were labeled a heretic. You could even be burned at the stake for spreading ideas that were against what the Catholic Church believed. So why would anyone even take the risk of going against a powerful organization like the Catholic Church? As explorers traveled around the world, they brought with them new ideas and technology. People began to question the ideas of ancient Greek and Roman scholars. People started to think, is this information correct? Because we've been referring to it for a very long time now. And let's not forget, the Renaissance was all about having a revival relying on the teachings of ancient Greeks and Romans. People went back to Greek and Roman art, philosophy, science. They had a lot of respect for classical Greek and Roman scholars. But all of that begins to change with this scientific revolution. Now, before the scientific method, scholars relied on ancient authorities, church teachings, common sense, which you'll learn is not that common, and reasoning to explain the physical world. Up until, scholars begin to use observation, experimentation, and scientific reasoning to gather knowledge and draw conclusions. So you're going to see a shift. Instead of just relying on what somebody from the past wrote down, there's going to be a method to finding out what's true and what's not. We're not just gonna rely on what the church says anymore. There's a shift away from that and towards methods that can be proven with a system. So this graph should look pretty familiar. We talked about the Black Death and the effect that it had on population. Thanks to scientific and medical advances, the population goes up even more over time. This is because you're going to have inventions like antibiotics that allow people to stay alive longer. These major, major changes, these advances, all start with the scientific revolution. So while you go through your slides individually, you're going to come across some new vocabulary. I encourage you to look up any words you don't understand, but I'm going to go over a couple right now. So we have a chart here comparing the scientific revolution to the Enlightenment. We have not discussed the Enlightenment yet, but these two ideas are related. Heliocentric theory challenges geocentric theory. Now, that might sound like big fancy words, but what that means is before people like Nicholas Copernicus came around, and you'll learn more about him when you study the slides, people believed that the Earth was the center of the universe. Nicholas Copernicus was the one to let everybody know, hey, that's not true. The sun is the center. Mathematics and observation support the heliocentric theory, the theory that the earth revolves around the sun. The scientific method develops and scientists make discoveries in many fields. Altogether, a new way of thinking about the world develops based on observation and willingness to question assumptions. Later, you're going to see the same ideas of challenging authority shown up again in the Enlightenment. People are going to apply the same questioning, the same doubting to politics, to their rulers. They're going to start saying, you know what, I don't think this is a way that you should be running a country. This is not how rulers should be treating their subjects. And they're going to push for change during the Enlightenment. You'll get to all that later. For now, I want you to take a deep dive into the accomplishments of many of these leaders of the scientific revolution. Galileo, Newton, Copernicus, Kepler. You're going to complete your closed notes and find out what each of these people did in order to advance the scientific revolution. Your closed notes for this lesson are going to be due Monday, June 1st. That means you have about a week to get it done. Um, I cannot accept this assignment late because we are coming to the end of the semester. So where can you find your closed notes? In the week 10 folder on Schoology. Let's go there. We're gonna click on the week 10 folder. And here, similar to week nine, you're going to see a closed notes digital version. You have the option of completing this assignment without printing. 
So guys, a copy of these slides will be available on Schoology in the week 10 folder. This is what you're going to use to help you fill in the blanks. Read carefully so you don't miss anything. You're gonna be digging deeper into the lives and inventions of these leaders of the scientific revolution. So please make sure you're on top of it. Let me know if you have questions. If you need to set an appointment with me for office hours, we can do that. Just make sure you're still on top, push towards the finish line. Don't slow down just because we're towards the end.